The following story was an official selection in our 1000 word fast fiction contest. If you enjoy reading, writing, or hearing more tales like this, head on over to coldopenstories.com. Over on the site, you can check out the fan fiction and original anthologies, as well as other audiobooks and our award winning full cast audio dramas. And now, Cold Open Stories presents The Lone Ranger, written by Jack Van Bainen and performed by R.J. Bailey. If the marshal had still had lips, the top one would have curled in disgust when he saw the shuttle dropping from the stratosphere. But his lips were long gone, along with a whole load of other shit no sane person really needed, so he contented himself with vocalizing a kind of sigh through the vox grill occupying the site of his former mouth. <laughs> he swung up onto the back of Ironside, his mechanical mount, and urged her forwards. Trouble with the Redcoats was, they was always trying to take shit that didn't belong to them. The Marshal knew. He'd been one of them. Sure, it was a while back, so long ago that his own Redcoat was ragged and faded to a pale green, and the cranial data banks, where the memories were stored, were starting to corrode. But he remembered how they thought. They didn't understand that this world and everything on it belonged to the chief, and the chief did not take kindly to having off-worlders uplifting his property. That was why he kept the marshal around, to make sure his law was respected. The marshal opened his mind to the chief's biosphere and saw, through the myriad eyes of a cloud of flies, that the redcoats had landed their shuttle right in the middle of the old spacecraft ruins. Took a lot of nerve, that did. He switched to an amphibian tasting the air nearby and slurped down the data from its tongue. About ten of the cog-kissing bastards, he reckoned. Ironside's four locomotives squelched in the mud and sloshed through the pools of stagnant water as she carried him closer to the interlopers. She had seen better days, had old Ironside. Rust covered her like a lichen, eating into her joints and plating and she always seemed to be leaking some kind of foul-smelling liquid. By all rights, she should have stopped functioning years back, but that was the thing about the chief's gifts. They were beyond understanding. All you could do was be grateful, maybe a little awed if that was your inclination. Heck, the marshal himself probably should have stopped working by now. His own augmetics were gummed up with sludge and oxidization, his flesh parts bloated and putrefied, pus oozing through his body alongside the blood and oil. But he worked on. He reined in Ironside on the rim of the old impact crater and cranked his Vox unit up to maximum volume. Halt! In the name of the law! He thundered. The Skitari working below him paused in their work and turned their optics on him. You are trespassing. If your cog-worshipping asses ain't airborne in that shuttle in the next 30 seconds, you're going to face the consequences. The marshal told them. The red coats were setting down their excavation gear and reaching for their rifles. Well, the marshal didn't need to wait to find out what would happen next. He lifted his carbine, picked one of the red coats off, slid down off Ironside's back and took cover behind her. She rocked a little as their shots hit her side plate. But not enough to spoil the marshal's aim as he took out two more of them. Even now, the squad's alpha would have calculated the optimal counterattack strategy and be broadcasting it to the rest of the unit. Sure enough, they scattered to find cover of their own among the half-submerged shards of the spacecraft. 
Mr. Marshall laid out another Scutarius, and then plunged down the side of the crater, going after the soldiers in cover. A shot from a galvanic rifle seared the socket where his right arm met the flesh of his shoulder, but he barely felt it. Another reason to be grateful for the chief's gifts. Come on, you cock kissing sons of bitches! He vocalized. He had dealt with another three of them, his own shots finding their mark while he shrugged off theirs, and was turning on the remaining three when his limbs were seized by a sudden paralysis. The marshal tried unsuccessfully to move, his mind scrambling to figure out what had happened. The answer presented itself as a red-robed figure descended from the hold of the red coat shuttle, holding a short staff tipped with a kind of spiked iron ball. A Magos. Stand down, Scatarius 5H37-1FF, the Magos said. Despite her many augmentations, she had retained her birth face, although the circuitry behind it meant it moved strangely. Or rather, failed to move as she spoke. So, she said, it's you who has thus far thwarted our attempts to recover this STC. One of our own. What in the name of the Omnissiah happened to you? It was a rhetorical question. The Marshal was unable to vocalize an answer, but it set him to remembering. He remembered the flight, the crash, the deaths of his squad mates, the silencing of their thoughts, which had for so long been nestled against his own in the new sphere, the loneliness, the hopelessness. Then, whisperings in his head, flashes of vision, the discovery of another kind of new sphere, more complex than anything the Mechanicus had ever made, a living network connecting everything on this strange planet, birds and beasts, flora and phages. The Marshal had faced a choice. He could join this wondrous new network, or face a long, slow death alone. All he had to do was bend to the Chief's will. Well, he'd been built to be part of something larger. Hello the Magos said, and the Marshal was compelled to obey. In doing so, the inflamed flesh of his left knee came into contact with the marshy soil of the planet's surface. He reached into the biosphere. They came from the undergrowth, all the chief's creations, slithering, scuttling, wriggling, oozing. Within seconds, the remaining red coats had been overwhelmed, torn down, chewed up, reduced to their base elements, and incorporated into the matter of the planet. If the marshal still had lips, he would have smiled.